It's, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? If we're compelled to do so, we can, definitely. But sometimes we can do a big change, like we can affect a big change down the line by changing a little thing here. Like a reusable theater collective, think of a startup like an app for designers to go and say, these are the things I need and have this startup of magic people collect things from the trash and from all the waste that is in New York City to source them with um, eco-friendly or reusable materials so they can furnish their place with things that already exist. Take that initial production or that initial way of working and, and translate it so that it can be adapted to educators or politicians or urban planners or whatever it is so that the artists can keep doing new things. And we need to create lots of work about climate change. We also need to widen the lens um, in our love stories and we also need to look at everything that already exists and say everything that ever existed has been within a climate and it's all sitting there in the language of whatever playwright and a lot of it is just pulling pulling it out so that reminding people that whatever othering we have fallen for never was true and it doesn't ever have to be true. I just want to lift up again that like there needs to be some sort of like where's the where's the node that's in frontline communities because if it's all if it's all in academia there's so many ways that academia perpetuates these structures climate change is affecting us but theater is not you know acting towards you know creating awareness in I've been in, you know, I've been um, in theater profession for the last um, ten years or more, but uh, I have never seen any play written on, uh, uh, written or produced on uh, climate change. Uh, so I was wondering why. I always ask myself why is why is theater reluctant to, you know, to engage itself to the most important question of. Uh, our time. <laughs>